Insurance is a term thrown around without a clean understanding as to its importance and abuse. In a free market environment, insurance can be an important financial tool and a key to prosperity. In a government forced market, it is neither a free market nor a financial tool, only a financial burden. Russ is going to provide some background on insurance, what it is, and more importantly, what it isn't, as an, as an effective financial tool. His challenge for the speech is to use the term, is to not use the term, Obamacare, Obama crime, or Obama corruption a single time. <laughs> Russ' speech topic is insurance, what it is, and what it isn't. Russ Farmer. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters. This morning I'd like to talk about insurance, give a little background as to what insurance really is. Insurance, unfortunately, or fortunately, is a mi risk mitigator. If you can pay for things, you pay for things. If along the way you run into a catastrophe, you'd like to have some mechanism available to you that provides for getting through that catastrophe and still having enough money to buy a beer in the evening. Okay, So insurance as a, as a risk mitigator, you pay either up front or you pay along the way. And if, a, if and when, maybe never happens, but if a catastrophe does happen, then the insurance will protect you, will protect you financially and pay for that cat catastrophe. So you can pay for your normal repairs on your house, but if your house burns down, you'd like to have some mechanism financially to recover so that you don't have to pay three, four hundred thousand dollars out to, to replace that. So you can pay the little things along the way and that's, that works, but it's these catastrophes, these big problems that you run into that you want to mitigate against. The insurance industry must, by its very nature, have a large number of people who are paying into this system such that they can build up this reserve and when a catastrophe does happen there's sufficient money to pay for it. And the theory is that there's only going to be a limited number of catastrophes that happen at any one point in time. So to have a catastrophe here in Colorado, a flood, at the same time that Mount St. Helen erupts, at the same time there's a hurricane that hits New York City probably isn't going to happen the same day. And they're betting on that. They're betting on the fact that not every year we're going to have a major flood coming through Colorado. And so the premiums can be very, very small because the likelihood of a major catastrophe hitting like that is fairly remote. On the other hand, if there are catastrophes that hit all the time, they have to vary those premiums because ultimately they have to have sufficient revenue, they have to have sufficient reserve to cover for all these catastrophes so they don't go out of business. And part of that is to calculate or bet on the future and figure out what is going to happen, how big a problem is this going to be for us, and based upon that, then they calculate the ongoing premiums that are going to be paid. So visually what this looks like is that you have a certain amount of payments, costs that you incur over time, symbolized by this green line. And maybe nothing ever happens. And then there's a very small administrative fee that the insurance company pays because they're the one that take care of the money, they're the ones that invest the money, they're the ones that create this, this reserve. And should a situation happen where you do have a catastroph catastrophic event, you pay the insurance company covers that. So your total premiums paid out are going to cover the ongoing cost that's going to have to be paid by the insurance company. But more importantly, there's a slight administrative cost. And it could be that the only time their insurance is ever paid out is when this catastrophic event comes about. Okay. So now we get to what insurance isn't. Insurance is not averaging of your ongoing payments. So if you have insurance, for example, that pays for all of your car repairs, it's really not insurance. It's just you're just paying for this along the way and you're spreading, you're averaging those payments out. If your insurance 
is to pay for all your medical expenses every time you go to a doctor. That's not really insurance. That's not mitigating any risk at all. That's just averaging your payments out. And it's even better if somebody else is paying for it. But it's not insurance. It is not insurance at all. There is very little risk. You're not mitigating risk. You're just averaging payments. So what does that look like? Well, what that looks like is you have your ongoing costs that you incur along the way. And then what you do is you have administrators associated with you're paying this money into somebody and somebody's taking care of these monthly payments. And then there's administrators on the other side that have these monthly payments or these, these payments to the, to the delivery service. So you have additional administrative costs. So in the, instead of paying your average cost plus a little administrative cost, you're paying an inordinate amount of, of additional funds to pay for all these administrative costs. So if we have, if we have a doctor here, okay, Dr. Dave, all right. Then we have Julius over here. He's, he's, he's sicker than heck. You know? <laughs> okay. But he's got, he's got some money, see? He's got some money that he can pay for this doctor. Okay. So he pays for the doctor, and the doctor takes care of him. Now, when we get administrators involved, there's all this money that Julius has over here, except he's got to pay this administrator, and he's got to pay this administrator, and oh, by the way, there's a lot less money for this guy over here. And why do, why do our insurance rates go up? That's because it's not insurance. That's because it's paying for this averaging concept. So, where does all this go? Where all this goes is we have this Ponzi scheme. Okay, this Ponzi scheme basically is where you're paying money into a system and there's more money that's being paid out to the early people to influence them, to get them excited about what's going to be paid to them later on. And as long as you have more money coming into the system than what's going out, it works pretty good for a short period of time. Okay, so the Ponzi scheme looks like this. Money's paid in, money's paid out. You build up this reserve, except at the point in time where more money's being paid out than is paid in, all of a sudden it starts crashing. So what do we have? Social Security, Ponzi scheme. Rick Perry mentioned that got beat up for it. The simple reality is Social Security, we have $15 trillion of more money that we, have, we owe than what's in that reserve. Totaling all this up, there's $139 trillion of unfunded liability in this Ponzi scheme. It's not insurance. It's something our kids are going to pay and our grandkids are going to pay. It's a travesty. Thank you.